<laughs> Look at that, the genius at work. <laughs> there, and he's using um, he's using a, a sort of automatic, that's like a computerised tuner, is it? You're not going that by ear, using the computerised one. <laughs> Almost there. Steve, your note perfect. Why don't you just? I think he needs a, a G around now. Do you want? To... <laughs> <laughs> if only that were the case. Digital radio online. BBC Six Music. Well, I don't know what's going on, people. Um, if you know, email in or text in 64046, because I tell you, this end, it's been chaos. I mean, it's been like a scene from the Poseidon Adventure, <laughs> frankly. There is just, it's people screaming around, you know, headless, uh, torsos <laughs> falling from windows, crashing through plate glass. There has been screaming, tears, largely from me. There, and I'm telling you, the, I'm not the sort of guy who copes well in a crisis. Um, <laughs> I have just, encouraging. I've been swearing. There was a rule when I first started radio, never swear in an on-air studio. Frankly, screw them, because I have been swearing like a trooper. <laughs> because, uh, frankly, I didn't realise Six Music was such a tin pot station. It turns out it is. The equipment, I mean, Jude is a very, very professional woman. This woman knows what she's doing. She has been in radio for 86 years. <laughs> she, is, she was there the early days of Marconi or whoever it was who got involved early on. Was he telly or radio? I can never remember. He was radio. He was radio. <laughs> but so she's been there since then, and uh, even she was a Pulled and flustered, and um, yeah, it turns out that uh, this never happens during you know Terry Wogan's breakfast no. show, does it? No. You don't, you no. don't get to get you know. Was he got about eight million listeners? Now you don't get to do that if you've got this kind of chaos happening. And this is all state of the art technology as well. I'm appalled and offended and disgusted, <laughs> and I feel frankly that someone should. And I'm, do you know the other thing is it? I am not being paid enough frankly, to deal with these kind of <laughs> conditions. I'm doing this out of love, not for money, and it angers me because I should get a decent pay hike after this. Anyway, enough complaining. We heard a little bit of Bob Dylan, one more cup of coffee from, uh, I think his 1976 album, Desire. Did we hear all of it? Did we hear all of it? We heard a little bit of Amy Mann. We heard a lovely little bit of Amy Mann, which maybe we can play again at some other point because I love Amy. We can play it now. We might do it in a sec. Can we, can we play it shortly? Yeah. Yeah? Okay, well listen, while we just acclimatise to the situations, because we've moved into another studio now and we've just got to, uh, I've just got to, you know, lay out all my candles and incense just so that I can make sure that. So while I do that, let's hear a bit from uh, Amy Mann, who personally, as far as I'm concerned, is the perfect six, sh six music Steve Show artist, a person who is criminally underrated. Frankly, why Dido can shift millions and Amy Mann not, then I don't know. But anyway, here's 4th of July from her album Whatever. <laughs> Amy Mann, from her album Whatever, and the song Fourth of July. Th those opening lyrics really just to me ex exemplify why Amy is so brilliant. Today's the Fourth of July, another June has gone by, and when they light up our tone I just think, what a waste of gunpowder and sky. It's beautiful, it's poetry, round of applause for Amy Mann. Beautiful, beautiful. She has redeemed what Woo! was turning into a chaotic mess of a show. Well done, Amy. Um, for those of you that have just joined okay, us, Amy. we are a little bit flustered and a bit taken aback because the the, um, the desk, the buttons, just started to smoke and fume, <laughs> and um, so overpowered were they by the brilliance of this radio. Uh, it's probably actually a ploy by one of the other six music DJs, probably. Of course somewhere. it was. Yeah. No, of that's, course. that's instantly what I'm thinking. You know how after 9-11 there's instantly a conspiracy theory? Well, I'm <laughs> hoping that listeners will start to concoct their own and put them on the web. Yeah. I'd like to say that living up to my poshness, I, I just stood up and started singing a Benjamin Britten song. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Thinking that that's what I always do in times of crisis. <laughs> yeah. And, you know, I thought, well, if the, if the records aren't working and CDs aren't I'll just sing Britain. <laughs> yeah, yeah. And by God we'll be okay. Yeah, and, uh, and we almost were. Um, but and in, in my in my usual blue collar way, I just uh, I soiled myself and legged it. <laughs> yeah, exactly. Uh, but never mind. Uh, never mind. Yeah. Well, I uh, in, in, in my my capacity as a minor celebrity, I just sat here waiting for someone else to deal with it. <laughs> <laughs> um, yes. But anyway, we, we've managed to have struggled through, and we've we've got by. It's okay. And um, so yes, as I say, Amy Mann uh, redeemed us uh, by that wonderful tune. It always frustrates me that uh, that Amy Mann, w who's wrote some amazing songs for the film Magnolia. Do you ever see the film Magnolia? Mm. One of the great films of all time. And she, of course, famously uh, was nominated for that and lost out, I believe, to Phil Collins for his uh, song mm. that he contributed to the film Tarzan, yeah. which I think makes a mockery of the Oscars coming yes. soon. <laughs> okay, now each week we'd like to get some listeners. We have um, discovered uh, during recent records that Rufus can add to his voice <laughs> canon. Uh, we obviously does Mandela. We know that already. And who's the other one you do brilliantly? Um, there's a couple of others. I've been working on Suggs as well, but we'll come to him <laughs> we'll another come, day. Yeah, we'll come yeah. to Suggs at a later point. Yeah, but yeah, yeah. Uh, yeah, you've been doing your Dylan for us. Yeah. Perhaps, <laughs> perhaps you'd perhaps you'd give your appraisal of that go team tune, um, a la um, uh, Bob Dylan's Theme Time Radio. Hour. We should maybe we should do it's it. It's like whose line is it anyway? It's yeah. brilliant. In the old days of university radio, we would have done that as in, oh, we've got a special guest in the studio. <laughs> yes, yes. Mr. Bob Dylan. Mm. So maybe you'd like to ask Bob Dylan what he thought of the uh, go team. I can't believe it. I've got Bob Dylan here <laughs> in the studio um, as a hilarious comic conceit. 
treat, and, um, and here he is to give to give his appraisal of the Go Team. Oh, yeah, it's very nice to be here on your on your video show, Stephen. Uh, I like the Go Team very much. I think that uh, at, it's at the top of my list for uh, video compilation. <laughs> To put at the soundtrack for it. I, I, I'm, I, I'm I losing it. It was, it, was, it was there for a bit. I don't know I'm what getting that was. I'm from Charlotte. Jude's on the floor. I don't know what that was. I did lose it a bit, didn't I? <laughs> it started well when... Because uh, it started with me. <clears throat> it started okay. Yeah. But uh, I, mean, I think you were a bit better when you were just recounting some of his recent uh, Theme Time Radio Hour links. Yeah. So you just give us that. So just to redeem your impression. Uh, it's... It's hard to think at the same, uh, having to create an accent and think about things to see at the same time is very hard. No, I'm saying, do yeah, do yeah, yeah, I should. Yeah. yeah. Well, the things I'm ready are has been about trains. Uh, uh, I don't know if anyone has been listening to it on the on the six music uh, listen again feature, uh, but he's been talking about trains and he did a section in his last show about uh, can you guess where these trains travel from and to the blue train? Well, that one goes Cape Town along the south coast of South Africa. Can you tell me about the Orient Express that goes? across Europe. <laughs> <laughs> Brilliantly vague about the European trains. Yeah. Um, um, it does sound an awful lot like Mandela. Yeah, it does a bit, doesn't it? It's a shame, you know, I thought mm. that you were going to be a hot new talent. We could yeah. start doing we could start doing hilarious crank calls yeah, where yeah, you yeah. phone people up. As where Dylan Bob rings Dylan. Mandela. Right. We get to do both sides. No, that wouldn't work, would it? No, I mean that we just will phone up someone in the phone book. Yeah. And, you know, who's this on the line? It's only Gordon Brown. Oh, brilliant, brilliant, I brilliant. I believe it. Yeah. So, um, yeah, work on that. And I will. That'll um, give us a uh, Noel Edmonds <laughs> style. Um, prank to do yeah. uh, when we've run out of steam. All right, well, thank you very much indeed, everyone, for your uh, views on those tunes and um, to that mediocre Bob Dylan impression. A little <laughs> round of applause in the Steve Wright style. The Cure and Catch, another e addition to our Songs to Seduce Women by CD, which uh, I think has got some absolute crackers on it. A lot of people are saying it's a very mellow compilation, and that's very true, but... Um, Screw them. <laughs> <laughs> it's got to be seductive, though, hasn't it? Exactly. Yeah. Otherwise, it's it's largely pointless. It's yeah. no good getting you know putting your Arctic monkeys on there for no, goodness' sake. Work. It it no, thank you, Dan, for supporting stupid, me. Thanks, mate, for championing. No, yeah, thank yeah. you, mate, for championing me. <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Each week, we set a question posed by Quizmaster Richard, a man who knows an awful lot about music. So much, in fact, that um, sometimes we just some people just do not even attempt to answer it because because um, they are so difficult. This one, I suspect, as usual, incredibly difficult. Hi, it's Richard here with another fiendishly difficult music question. Yep. <laughs> Who appeared at the Woodstock Festival in 1969, the Isle of Wight Festival in 1970, and Bill Clinton's presidential integration in 19... 93. That's tricky. Mm, I that's want to know tricky. who appeared at the Woodstock Festival in 1969. 69 Woodstock, yep. The Isle of Wight <laughs> Festival in 1970. 1970 Woodstock, yep. And Bill no, not Clinton's Woodstock, that's presidential, presidential oh, pres inauguration Bill Clinton. in 1993. Inauguration. 93. Oh, well, it's very tricky. 64046 Ooh. if you think you know the answer. Stephen.6music at bbc.co.uk. I wonder if we should start giving stuff away. In order to try and persuade people to contribute. Not this week, though, surely. We haven't got anything, have we? No. Good the point, Dan. <laughs> the expense as well. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> Forget it. Forget it, yeah. 64046stephen.6music at bbc.co.uk. Ernestine Anderson, a woman who has been singing since the 1940s, but actually put out her last album in 2003, although she is still with us, thankfully, um, and that's fairly impressive. A round of applause for Ernestine Anderson. No, just, just, just for being alive <laughs> for that <laughs> amount of time. That's a track called Keep an Eye on Love, which you can find on a Northern Soul compilation called the UK Sue Label Story. It's a compilation that collects together tracks put out by the UK Sue Label, all right, just to make that clear <laughs> for people out there. Um, we've had a number of texts and emails responding to Richard's question. I just want to, we've also had a few others, because people just like to, to uh, get in touch with the show, and I really appreciate that. Please um, by all means, keep stuff coming in all the time. We really appreciate it. It's nice to know that there's actually people listening. I've had uh, an e a text here that says, Steve, I am Mary, age 15, from Liverpool, and I'm doing um, a, with my cousin Annie, I'm doing a, um, uh, some stuff at the Liverpool Drama Festival, and we're doing some scenes from your TV show, Extras. Now, let me just tell you, Mary, age 15, that I do not believe that you have got copyright clearance <laughs> to perform any scenes from that show, and I think you'll find my lawyers will be getting in touch. <laughs> we're coming down on you like a ton of, with a ton of bricks. With a t we're literally with a ton of <laughs> <laughs> we will, um, we will come down hard. Now, of course, Mary, we, uh, you, by all means, um, perform your heart out, and I'd be, I'd be very interested to see, uh, maybe you'll video it, probably on a DVD, send it to us, and we'd love to see it, that'd be great. Um, we've had lots of responses to Richard's ludicrously difficult music question. Dan, what have you got for us? Uh, uh, Harry, Dan, either of you? Uh, yeah, on the emails, uh, Danielle says Bob 
Dylan, that's not right. Uh, Stuart <laughs> in Glasgow says Tom Waits, equally not right. Um, almost everyone else said Fleetwood Mac. Uh, Laura, Matthew, uh, Dan, you've got some more Fleetwood Mac chumps. I have, yeah. They, they <laughs> were foolish on the email and even more foolish on the text because it may have cost them, I'm not entirely sure. Uh, but Chris from London, you said Fleetwood Mac, you were wrong. Kieran Tootingbeck, wrong. Darren Packer, wrong. Um, a couple of people Ooh, have Darren, said... Was Darren Packer wrong? Darren Packer was wrong. He's usually quite good. <laughs> I know. No, he's, he's let himself... He's let himself go. Yeah. And it, <laughs> yeah, it's put on, it's put on my He's put on a lot of yeah. D um, Packer is, is, is grotesque now, in my opinion. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, sorry, uh, Darren. Um, and uh, <laughs> Fowler and uh, Andrew of Oral, they've said Willie Nelson. They've said Willie Nelson. They're Let's hear the wrong. answer. The question was, who appeared at the Woodstock Festival in 1969? I remember this question. Yeah. The <laughs> Isle of Wight <laughs> Festival... 1970? In 1970. Yep. Mm. And Mac. Bill Clinton's presidential integration in 1993. 93. 93. It was Richie Havens. Richie Havens? Ah. Also recently appeared with the Jazz Cafe, who appeared at Woodstock, Isle of Wight, and Bill Clinton's presidential <laughs> bachelor. <laughs> All the things, <laughs> All he, just things he just said. Richie Havens, which of course is a fairly obscure answer, because yeah. um, I don't know if people are even familiar with Havens. We should have played a track by Havens to end the show. That would have been a perfect combination of all, all the minds and stuff. Anyone get that right? Yeah, Paul in Cleethorpes on the text. Well done to him. Cleethorpes, yeah. I thought Paul probably would. He's no, good Paul. Good He's very, very typical. Yeah. Um, yeah, Richie Havens, of course, a guy who did, um, going back to my roots... Yes. <laughs> Harry, sing some of it for us to remind people. <laughs> Zipping up my boots, going back to my roots. That's classy. I've not heard you sing ever, I think. That's really, really impressive. Listen, that's pretty much it for the show uh, this week. I am trying to um, pad now because we have to uh, end <laughs> at exactly the right moment. What course? Mighty Fists. That's the nature of the bouncer. I don't want to slag the bouncers off. There are many. I, what I, uh, this tip I've always discovered is if you're, doing, if you're getting on all right with them, always make sure you get their name. And then when yeah. you leave, say, oh, see you later, Charlie. Really? Uh, yeah, I love it. They love it. No, yeah. See, I've tried being friendly with them before and they see right through me yeah that's because they can tell you're not you're not so sort of, you're not sort of a media bigwig like myself <laughs> whereas they can respect that but we <laughs> do you remember when we were in harry and i were in uh, america once uh we had a few run-ins didn't we we had a few run-ins i'd um i pulled some strings and i've got uh, <laughs> our names on some guest lists yeah. there were people i mean i didn't want to name drop but these were kind of big tv Huge people, people big names yeah. and they pulled some strings for me and so we pulled up then we went to this uh, hot club at the time <laughs> and we walked up to there and we said uh, i said uh, yeah excuse me uh, we're on the guest list uh -huh. the guy went which guest list uh -oh. i went well you know yeah, just on, on, i said how many guest lists are there he went two i went could you check both <laughs> <laughs> he went no i haven't got time yeah i thought well Okay, we stood there. He was nothing was going on. It was no. just three people now stood, <laughs> separated by a rope. He had nothing happening. Yeah, he had two clipboards which he wouldn't look at. Yeah, I thought, well, it's going to be under M. <laughs> Have a look there, or possibly yes, depending on how your you know how your system works. But he refused to look, and uh, it was so embarrassing because people would come up, they'd go through the rope, and we'd have yeah. to just stand there like a couple of it lemons. It was hideous. And, I, and then I had a number to call if there was any problems. Phone the number. That was on answer phone. Getting yeah. more irate with them. Don't you know who I am? And, uh, so eventually we just, we, we sidled away. It was yeah, too, it was too it embarrassing. Was all very sad. We went to another, uh, club that we were also on the guest list for. We, uh, we pulled up there. They didn't want to let they us in. They didn't want to let us in. We walked up to that, we said, we're on the guest list. She went, I don't think so. <laughs> I said, I said, can you have a look? So she had a look. She said, I do apologize. You are on the list. She let yeah. us in. We went in there. It Man was alive. terrifying. It was the most intimidating place I have ever been in. It was every single person in there, including the guy who was cleaning the lavatories. And the bar staff, the most attractive people you've ever seen. I mean, like, I'm talking was, Vogue yeah. cover shoot quality. I, was, I didn't know what to do. It we, was awful. We just stood there gawping at these people. <laughs> and the, uh, the person who not let us in came in, didn't she, and apologised, yeah, yeah, which yeah. was great. That's exactly what you want. That's what you want. A bouncer to come in. I do apologise. Because then there's us in there, these two freaks, and everyone's thinking they, they've got no right to be in there. But all of a sudden, you know, the management's coming in and being nice to us. And I know what you're thinking. You're thinking, ding dong, you know, <laughs> all these hot chicks thought, oh, oh, who are these players? No, they didn't. <laughs> we had a couple of beers, we left, went to a local bar, we were in back. BBC Six Music. The Connells or the Connells, we're not sure, from 1993 and 74, 75. They, do you know what? They've, they've got a, their tenth album coming out this year. Oh, I've really? never heard a single one of them. I'm not <laughs> sure anyone has, are they, beyond that song? But so there we are. It's a Steve show where BBC Six Music, and um, we uh, obviously have my cronies here who recommend music to me, but you, the listeners as well, can get in touch and uh, recommend songs which uh, perhaps I haven't heard or I've forgotten. And uh, one of the people who's got in touch is on the line now. Hopefully it's Jason Land. Is Jason there? Hello. Hello, mate. How All right. are you? Very well, thank you. How are you? I'm enjoying myself. Enjoying okay. myself because I'm outside the pub oh. in the sun, drinking alcohol. That's beautiful. And so, you're still able to listen to six music. 
Yeah, because I've got a portable dab radio, so... Ooh. 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 The only people in the world who think I'm, I'm down with the youth. Clearly, and yet you don't sound like you're youthful. <laughs> <laughs> hey, what, are you in your, in your, in your 40s? Uh, yeah, you cheeky individual. I know, but I'm 36. I, I, I got, no, 36. Oh, well, I'm fast approaching. And, um, and uh, you're there, you're wandering around, you just, you just go for a little pub crawl, do you, on your own on a Sunday uh, No, no, not on my own. I have my daughter with me, who's called Scarlet. Right. And I have my dog with me, who's called Goose. OK. And they're both with me. And, um, and how old is Scarlet? Scarlet is two and a half. Right, and what's her favourite tipple at the pub? Uh, whatever I give her to quieten her down. So you're forced to <laughs> sit out in the, are you forced to sit out in the, gar in the pub garden? Um, I'm not quite sure at this place. Um, I don't know what the rules like are a, a, a play thing, a slide, and, and we're outside, and because of the dog, I come outside anyway, so... And how did you arrive at the name Goose for the dog? I, I like the fresh air, so it's okay. How did you arrive at the name Goose for the dog? I'm intrigued. Um, I like naming dogs after an, other animals. <laughs> <laughs> well, there's an answer. <laughs> Have you done that to a lot of... Sometimes a man or a woman with a guitar and a voice is all you need, and uh, there's a good example of it, Richard Thompson, and the choice of Jason Land, um, 1952, Vincent Black Lightning. Uh, Jason, are you still there? Yes. Oh, what a yes. beautiful song. It's wonderful. He is a wonderful, wonderful songwriter. Well, that's a wonderful choice. And you sound like a wonderful man, if you don't mind me saying. Oh, I am absolutely beautiful, both <laughs> physically and mentally. And, uh, <laughs> and, um, and, I, and I hope that you'll, uh, you'll uh, treat yourself to another, uh, another pint of Guinness or whatever you drink and maybe buy uh, Scarlet, you know, um, a gin and tonic or something. Uh, and... No, no, well, I think something with Red Bull, because she's two and a half and not quite hyper enough. Right, sure, <laughs> yeah. You want to get her pied with E-numbers as fast as possible. Oh, yeah, fruit shoot, yeah. Sure. Get her just running around, screaming around that. Uh, that's, do you know what? If I was in that pub, that's what I'd appreciate. <laughs> well, ex exactly. Sleep is overrated anyway. Exactly. Like, when we get back later, you know, who needs it? Well, listen, enjoy the rest of your day, and um, thank you for listening to Six Music, and also thank you for buying a DAB digital portable radio. I don't think anyone else in the country's done that, so uh, well, round of applause for being the I first. I didn't actually buy it. My, uh, my partner, girlfriend, what do you call them when you're 36? Sure. My pre-wife bought it for <laughs> me a few years ago. Well, that's very sweet of her. She obviously knows what she's doing. Well, want to get me out of the house. Sure. <laughs> <laughs> and uh, to walk goose. To walk goose, yes. Sure. Um, listen, uh, we really appreciate talking to you, and uh, thanks for uh, getting in touch and everything, and um, I'm sure we'll speak to you again in the future. Oh, I I've, got, I've got a feature for you, by the way. Go on. I've got a new feature for you. R.E.M. Remembrance Sunday. Uh, <laughs> records linked to R.E.M. Not Don't have to be R.E.M. I've got about two years' worth of that, if you're interested. <laughs> Two I'm years. so confused oh, by yeah. your the R. Uh, do you know what I think? What we're going to do is Remembrance Sunday. Right, listen. Do you know what? we've only got half an hour left of the show? <laughs> I think you should email <laughs> in with this idea because we've run out. So that it could be a barnstormer. It could keep us going for weeks on end. Um, but <laughs> <laughs> I appreciate it. Thank you very much, indeed, Jason. Well, Randall Paul's in the street by star. Thank you. We'll speak to you again, Jason. Thank you. I remember being, I don't want to sound show busy, I was in Los Angeles once, uh, City of Angels, with uh, one of my erstwhile <laughs> writing partners, Ricky Gervais. I say many, one of, I mean, he's my only erstwhile writing partner. And uh, we went for a little wander, and you know, you can't really walk in LA, you've got to drive, really, yeah. but we didn't realise that, and we staggered out of this hotel, and we went for a walk, it was very hot, and we wandered into West Hollywood, which is, uh, which we didn't realise this, but it's a well-known kind of gay area in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. So we walk along, and it's uh, getting um, uh, hotter and hotter, and we stop for a little uh, bite to eat in a diner, and it might have been the gayest diner that has ever existed, right? And that, you know, and, and that's fine, but there's two of us here, and we're slightly self-conscious, because we've sort of come in and we're kind of bickering because it's too hot and everything. We look like an old married <laughs> gay couple. <laughs> and um, this guy comes over to serve us who, again, was a cliché of the sort of person you would find wait waitering in a restaurant in gay Hollywood and had that kind of L.A. voice. <laughs> Hi! You know, and he was absurd. He was like a caricature you'd see in a show. And I think he might have been on roller skates when he came over, <laughs> when he came over to uh, serve us. And he's like, how can I help you guys? And um, obviously, so we were slightly tickled just because of the fact that he was such a caricature. And then, and Ricky, for those of you who don't know, he sometimes, this is how he keeps himself looking so good, he sometimes works out in the morning, right? In the gym at the hotel. So, uh, and I didn't realise this, he was wearing a tracksuit, okay? And just as if we were sort of trying to sort of suppress the laughter of the kind of absurd camp guy, Ricky took his, uh, his tracksuit jacket off, and beneath it, he was wearing a tight black sweat vest <laughs> that you would use whilst working out, you know, with no sleeves. Right, so I could sort of see his man boobs and everything there. And it was as though he had deliberately worn it into West Hollywood in order to take it off at the opportune moment. So he took this off. He you can imagine what he would look like wearing that sweat vest, right? I just burst 
burst into hysterics. <laughs> I'm just killing myself. But now I'm sort of laughing at Ricky, and then obviously I'm trying to explain why am I laughing to the guy who's sort of slightly offended, the waiter now is slightly offended. And I said what you shouldn't say in that situation, which is, I'm not laughing at you, <laughs> <laughs> to the guy. And, um... It's one of those things again, as with the, as with Jack Twat. There's no way you can't laugh. There's no way you can exp- you know, you can't explain to someone no. really uh, why you're laughing. And I think he just sort of roller skated off, <laughs> you know, in a kind of hissy mood. But um, but yeah. It's- BBC Six Music. Rah! Uh, take the money and run from the Steve Miller Band, 1976. I played that for my mother, who uh, informed me by uh, phone message earlier that she has completed a charity walk in aid of a hospice with a friend. Uh, well done to her. It took her 72 minutes, and that seems strangely appropriate. She, she'll take the money. She didn't run, she walked. But, <laughs> you know, I mean, come on, I was I was working on the hoof. And um, uh, so, yes, well done to her and anyone else who's done any kind of charity fun run or whatnot, a bike ride of some co- kind today. Um, uh, don't get in touch. Uh, we've got time to talk about it. Because we're just crammed full of music, aren't we, on this show? And um, I'm always being told that I've got to keep this uh, opening link short because um, people get tired otherwise, people get bored, they want to move on, they want to go on to other stations. Uh, so I will just quickly introduce you to my uh, my mob, <laughs> as I uh, never call them. And uh, the far end there, we're welcoming him back from his uh, holiday excursion. It's uh, Harry, works in a bank. Yeah, Little thanks, round of applause Steve. to Steve nice Yeah, keep that, in, uh, keep that clapping going for uh, professional northerner Sammy. Hello, Sammy. Hello. All right there. And um, he's, very, he's back as well. He's a very, very tiny man. And he's barely able to reach the microphone, but we're welcoming back uh, Dan. Hi. All right, good job. Well, that's all done. Obviously, Crazy Jude is here as well. Um, she's clinically insane. I'm not allowed to explain <laughs> or talk to people. Uh, I'm not allowed to talk to you, the listeners, about exactly what has driven her over the edge. But uh, she, I don't know if you've been watching Heroes, but uh, in that show, um, there's a woman in there in a padded cell, isn't there? And uh, is that what it was like for you? Yes. Yeah. It's got, I always think the padded cell looks quite good fun. I always think you, do you have a little bounce around in it? Bit dull. Is it a bit dull after all? It's not much going on, is there? Lost its sheep. All right, but you're back and uh, you're here to press buttons. For us, so press one now as we play the cribs. Do that. I can't do that. Do that. I can't. I can because it's like it's what Steve Wright would do. My oh, hero. So bad. Oh, Brilliant no, songs. Steve ruined. will often sing at the end of you know perhaps needles and pins. <laughs> needles and pins. He'll laughly you know tune. He doesn't care. That's what people want that from DJs. He's one of the most successful DJs in the country. For goodness sake, what's wrong with you? <laughs> Is that um, what the kids want? The kids listening to Six oh, Music? The, the kids in 1984, dude. That's what we all listen to. Remember doing your homework? Hang on, who's this? An amusing guest has yeah. just called in. Perhaps, uh, I think it was uh, Gervais. Was it Gervais? Mi- Mr. Angry? No, it was Mr. Mr. Angry. Mr. Angry. There was Sid also the a manager. character called Gervais, I think. Yeah. Yeah. Sid the manager. Well, Mr. Gervais, Spoons. There was. There was. Gervais, was he like a gay hairdresser or something? It was, yeah. Classic. Can do it now. That's what. Spoons! Mr. Spoons. <laughs> <laughs> what did Mr. Spoons do? I don't remember Mr. Spoons. He had uh, a he was, song. Yeah, yeah. He's insane. He's no cool cat. Is he a Yankee? No, he's no, a prat. Yeah. yeah. Mr. Spoons. I, man, I should have been at school and I was at home <laughs> listening to Steve Wright. Um, you want to give a big shout out. Now, be careful. It's not a, a Pete Tong esque shout out, is it? It's not, it's not a big shout out. If you hear this shout out, don't go round to the town where Esther lives <laughs> and okay. bother her anymore because she's had a bike stolen. Aww. Esther's had a bike stolen? Esther's had a bike stolen. That's it. Uh, she lives near Bath. That's absolutely vague enough. Uh, mm. She's very upset, but uh, she's obviously been cheered up by your bit of singing on the end of David Bowie. <laughs> do 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 diddle uh, <laughs> oh. Who needs a bike? I tell you, I am now going to sing at the end of every... <gasps> hey, thinking of switching to another station, <laughs> you'd, be, you'd be a fool. Here's Steve Merchant. Uh, sing to the end of songs <laughs> and thus ruin them um yes uh no i won't be singing of course i'd be mad that'd be insane i'd quite like you to sing to the end of the next <laughs> yeah, one exactly. brilliant uh, well, i might do we'll see we'll see when we come to it i don't want to give away what it is a little treat for uh, mm. some of the old school what a teaser <laughs> some of the old school uh, gang <laughs> okay so listen um <laughs> shortly we'll be speaking to sharon horgan her a tv show pulling which is a sitcom it was bafta nominated its first series a second series returns tonight and uh, it's absolutely cracking if you've not seen it it's very very funny indeed we'll let her talk about it but naturally the subject and uh, face the other way, apparently. I can't imagine a more proper man than Ed Sturton. I like the f- the thought of him doubled up. Yeah. Uh, I mean... Not... not. <laughs> but, uh... Sure, thanks. <laughs> but as a man who has uh, had to, on occasion, act, and when you've got something that just tickles you, you'll know that as an actress, uh, Sammy, yeah. that when, when you get going, there is no way of stopping it. And it's the greatest... It's like a hysteria, isn't it, that overwhelms you? Rufus once described it to me as experiencing every human emotion at once it's you're not you're not finding anything funny yeah it's fear it's pain it's discomfort it, it's horrible it's the most uneasy feeling because you're not laughing it's <laughs> just emotion escaping from your face it's horrible i remember being i don't want to sound showbiz 
crazy. I was in Los Angeles once, uh, City of Angels, with uh, one of my erstwhile writing partners, Ricky Gervais. I say many, one of. I mean, he's my only erstwhile writing partner. And uh, we went for a little wander. And you know, you can't really walk in LA. You've got to drive, really. Yeah. But we didn't realise that. And we staggered out of this hotel. And we went for a walk. It was very hot. And we wandered into West Hollywood, which is, uh, which we didn't realise this, but it's a well known kind of gay area in Hollywood, right? Mm -hmm. So I walk along and it's uh, getting um, uh, hotter and hotter. And we stopped for a little uh, bite to eat in a diner. And it might have been the gayest diner that has ever existed, right? And that, you know, and, and that's fine. But there's two of us here. And we're slightly self conscious because we've sort of come in and we're kind of bickering because it's too hot and everything. We look like an old married <laughs> gay couple. <laughs> and um, this guy comes over to serve us who, again, was a cliché of the sort of person you would find w wait waitering in a restaurant in gay Hollywood and had that kind of LA voice. <laughs> Hi! You know, and he was absurd. He was like a caricature you'd see in a show. And I think he might have been on roller skates when he came over, <laughs> when he came over to uh, serve us. And he's like, how can I help you guys? And um, obviously, so we were slightly tickled just because of the fact that he was such a caricature. And then, and Ricky, uh, for those of you who don't know, he sometimes, this is how he keeps himself looking so good, he sometimes works out in the morning, right? In the gym at the hotel. So, uh, and I didn't realise this, he was wearing a tracksuit, okay? And just as we were sort of trying to sort of suppress the laughter of the kind of absurd camp guy, Ricky took his, uh, his tracksuit jacket off and beneath it, he was wearing a tight black sweat vest <laughs> that you would use whilst working out, you know, with no sleeves. Right, so I could sort of see his man boobs and everything there. And it was as though he had deliberately worn it into West Hollywood in order to take it off at the opportune moment. So he took this off. He look, you can imagine what he would look like wearing that sweat vest, right? I just burst into hysterics. I'm just killing myself. But now I'm sort of laughing at Ricky and then obviously I'm trying to explain why am I laughing to the guy who's sort of slightly offended, the waiter now is slightly offended. And I said what you shouldn't say in that situation, which is, I'm not laughing at you <laughs> to the guy. And um it's one of those things again, as with the uh, as with Jack Twat. There's no way you can't laugh. There's no way you can exp you know you can't explain to someone no. really uh, why you're laughing. And I think he just sort of roller skated off, <laughs> you know, in a kind of hissy mood. But um, but yeah, it's uh, it's joyful. Oh, oh, I'm having no, I'm not. Okay, oh. just a tease, just a tease. We're Still all to, poised. You're all poised to oh. step in. You don't know when it's going to happen. Um, we've not had any new music for a while. Uh, here's from the current Lionheart Brothers album, Fifty Souls and a Disco Ball. And um, that was little Jimmy Davis on MySpace on the mic there. Nice work, Jimmy. <laughs> and um, I don't know, there's, I know the emails are ablaze. A lot of people are saying that I promised a little bit of, uh, to drop a few rhymes. <laughs> okay. Um, <laughs> uh, <laughs> would you be able to offer me some kind of beat? Yeah. Yeah? Just yeah. I need something fairly fast. I think we need some, yeah. Something fairly fast. Go for it with John Boy. <laughs> just, just some beatboxing. Yeah. Okay. One, two, three. <laughs> okay, good. <laughs> Live on the mic. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> There's a guy in the place got a bit of street face, and he goes by the name of Ebenezer Good. His friends call him Ezer, and he is the main geezer, and he vibes from the place like no other man could. He's refined, he's sublime, he makes you feel fine. He's very much maligned and misunderstood. If you see Ezer, he's a real proud Ezer. He's ever so good. He's ever he's a good. Forwards and then backwards, backwards and then forwards. Ezer is a geezer who loves to muscle. And let's get to the chorus. He's a good. He's a good. He's a good. He's a good. Okay, good. Stop. <laughs> To, When's the album out? I had to stop there because I don't know if you noticed there was a hidden message in that song, um, which caused a lot of controversy in about '91. I didn't want to get into that trouble again. Um, lads, E's are not good. All right, I know that a lot of you are probably going to festivals this year. E's are not good. Okay, um, but thank you very much indeed, guys, and uh, thanks for that little impromptu session. That's going to have won us major awards. <laughs> thank you, guys. Another round of applause. From the new uh, album Diamond Hoo Ha, that Supergrass and Return of Inspiration. Thanks very much indeed to Nisloppy. Their album is released tomorrow and it is called Make It Happen. Uh, Harry, you just want to drop something in before we go to the news? Yeah, um, Ali on the email uh, says that is it just her or does Stephen Merchant sound like a Dalek when he raps? Nothing wrong with that. Dalek's <laughs> very, very popular at the moment. Doctor Who starting again this week. Big, big show. Um, <laughs> you said that I also dropped a f couple of wrong lyrics. Yeah, bitter street face. And then you got like an entire line, all the words jumbled up near the end. It was good. I enjoyed it though. Yeah, but I didn't see you. You 
uh, just jumping in there to offer a bit of uh, hip hop in? No, my mi- mic was down. I'm not allowed to rap. <laughs> sure, well, we'll see how you fare uh, <laughs> after the news. <laughs> On digital. From their uh, 1993 album, Gold Against the Soul, that's the Manic Street Preachers, of course, and uh, La Tristesse Churera <laughs> from Silence, <laughs> so to it's a Simon Scream and a Sigh, some sign and a Scream. You see, that's what makes me wonder that this whole being a cultural reference for the, for the week. This might be struggling, because you're, you're struggling with some basic Spanish, or is it French? <laughs> oh, I'm not helping, am I? <laughs> le, le, le tristesse. Ger- le gerera. La, that's French. Le, le, le gerera. Le tristesse. From the minute <laughs> teaching the pictures. Um, Steve Shun, the music. Uh, so thanks very much indeed to uh, Nis Lobby. I thought that was... BBC Six Music. Ray Winston, that's probably what you talk. Hey, talking of bad impressions, I've come up with a little fun game because a lot of listeners get in touch with me and they say, dear, dear Steve, when will they be able to bring back competitions on the BBC? Because, of course, because you're all so scandalous and uh, outrageous and constantly trying to screw us out of money and our minds, um, uh, you can't have competitions. There's no competitions on the BBC anymore. But... I do not want you, the listening public, who are so desperate for competitions and quizzes, to go uh, empty-handed. So I've come up with a little quiz. Um, I've got a little book of rock and pop quotations. And I've chosen a couple of the, the more interesting ones. And it's just a bit of fun. Don't worry. You know, and obviously don't email off texting. There's no prizes and stuff. It's just for you at home. Remember, so you're sat there. You're uh, with your wife. Um, things are a bit fractious, a bit awkward, you know, because, I don't know, you've got into an argument. Probably the end of the relationship. In order to paper over the cracks for yet another Sunday, why not join in with this game? You can have a little squabble. But it'd be more playful this time and not so hurtful. So um, just uh, see if you can figure out. And I'm going to throw it to these guys here in the studio, Dan and Sammy. Do not look at that crib sheet. I'm going to ask Rufus. You're saying, where's Rufus's involvement? Rufus, we know, a man of a thousand voices, many of them very similar, <laughs> but a man of a thousand voices, <laughs> um, who I'm going to ask to give, uh, I should give a, a vague impression, uh, not, not, not a specific impression, because that would make it too easy, a vague whiff of an impression as he reads out that quote, and uh, we'll see, uh, just raise your hand, guys, when you think you know who it might be, all right? So Dan, Sammy, you're the one that's here very much in this, and you, the listener at home as well, enjoy. So they're rock and pop quotes that have been gleaned from years of uh, old copies of The Enemy or whatnot. So, uh, go ahead. Quote number one. <laughs> Sid Vicious was just a mindless twerp. I didn't find anything at all romantic about him, or even interesting. Now, before you give an answer there, Dan, I should point out, it's not David Frost. Oh, there is a whiff Frost of David is Frost. very different. There's a whiff of David <laughs> Frost in that impression. Let's hear a bit of your Frost. My, my David Frost is much more slurred, so you should <laughs> recognise that from my... Uh, it's kind of David Frost uh, it if is, he yeah. were stoned. It's a, it's, a, yeah. it's a clipped Frost. Yeah. Sure. Dan, your hand shot into the air, um, which of course was not very far up. No, no, it wasn't very far, but you did spot it, so well done, the new glasses are working. Thank you. I've quite like a buzzer, but I guess he's a bit too short notice it to uh, get one of those in. Um, was it Malcolm McLaren? It wasn't, I'm afraid. I hope you're not listening to the impression. Don't be put off by the impression. That's just to give you a little flavour, okay? Do not listen to the impression. Listen to the words. Give us one more time. Uh, Sid Vicious was just a mindless twerp. I didn't find anything at all romantic about him or even interesting. Sammy. Johnny Rotten. Ooh, that would have been interesting. That would have been controversial. It's a kind of controversial thing he might say. It is. Well, he would have been kicking over a bin and probably headbutting that old lady. See, he, he'd know spin. how to have dealt with a uh, little old lady bothering you in a tea shop, wouldn't he? He'd have just spat on her, probably. I don't know <laughs> yeah, that for yeah. a fact, Johnny. I don't know. You said you were in a fine restaurant in Hampstead. You've let the truth slip there. It was a tea, <laughs> tea shop. It was a tea shop. I'm not going to lie to you. I had some tiramisu. <laughs> <laughs> um, uh, yes, yeah, so well, neither of you got it right. Mm. Um, go on, give us the answer. The answer is David Bowie. It's David Bowie. Oh, yeah. 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 Vicious. Yeah. All right, give us one more before we go to the uh, pigeon. Uh, um, I'll grow old physically. I won't grow old musically. <laughs> <laughs> I have to say, that was a great impression. When you know the answer, you are going to be so excited about this. Um, Will Young. Okay. <laughs> Do you know what? That's not far off. Really? In a strange way, it could be very much this generation's Will Young. Oh. Uh, so, Dan, you've already had an answer. I don't know how the rules work. Am I allowed to go again? I'm making them up as I go along. <laughs> okay. <laughs> go, 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 Sammy, go. This is dead time. This is dead air. You just trying to mouth something at me then. I'm all I got was either television or television. No, it wasn't either. I haven't got a clue. I was going to say um, Mick Jagger. That was a pure. Jude, you're so off. keen to answer. Go on. Cliff Richard. Let's hear that impression again. I'll grow old physically. I've got lost the impression. It's gone. <laughs> That's a shame. You're it's right. Going it's so Cliff well. Richard. Yay! Yeah. Hey, well done. Well done. Um, yeah, just give that impression again. It was great. <laughs> I'll grow old well physically. I won't. Lie. I've lost it. I've lost the oh, voice. That's a the shame. voice is gone. I'll get it back in there. Quick, a bit of frost before we go to some music. A little bit of doubt. Can I introduce the next track? What is it? Well, why don't you tell us that we're going to delve into the pigeonhole? We're going to delve into the pigeonhole soon. Well, so let's do it like, like, we were, like we were going through the keyhole. All oh, right, okay. <laughs> Ladies and gentlemen, after the next track, we'll be going into. No, stop. <laughs> this is the next track. <laughs> Christmas, Jones. Make it clear. <laughs> okay. Right. All right. Let's presume it's a great. It's another episode of Through the Keyhole. Right. right. It's daytime TV. <laughs> 
Um, uh, once again, the panel who you've never seen yeah. are going to try and identify a celebrity who you've never seen. Yeah. Okay. And so uh, the let's imagine the celebrity. I'll oh, forget it. Just play a tune. <laughs> This is the Steve Show on BBC Six Music with me, Sir David Frost, and we're going into the pigeon. Right, Bye. Off Bye. they go. They are good guys. They're good guys. And if you want to recommend a track to me that you uh, would like to hear played on the show, then www.bbc.co.uk forward slash six music, and uh, hopefully you'll find my face and you can uh, make a recommendation that way. Yeah, Steve, uh, the new pornographers there were very eloquently uh, recommended by Jack. Uh, obviously did a bit of work as well looking into them. Uh, Canadian band... Uh, basically fronted by a guy called A.C. Newman, uh, and the band features Nico Case, who's an old country pinup and tremendous recording artiste. Uh, the problem I had, uh, as people who take any notice of what I say will remember, there's probably about three of them, uh, I don't have an internet hookup of at course. the moment, so I had to do uh, my Nico Case and my uh, new pornographer's research at work. Obviously, after hours, in my own time, you, sure. know, I, you know, I'm not getting paid for that. No. So, uh, <laughs> obviously, I went into Google, new pornographers. <laughs> You're asking for trouble, aren't you? Oh, causes no. a few issues, not as many issues, as a colleague of mine uh, who had to go and pay his council tax. Uh, he lives in the London borough of Hammersmith and Fulham. Uh, so he's a lazy Googler. He basically types in HBFL, uh, uh, Googled it, hit the first thing. But what he'd actually done was get all the letters the wrong way round, and uh, he actually ended up in a website called Lesbian Bitches from Hell. Wow. <laughs> yeah. <laughs> the, the London borough of Hammersmith and Fulham, he got the words wrong, he got the letters wrong. Lesbian bitches from hell. Oh, I can see how it would happen. Exactly. Is there any truth to that story? It's completely 100% true. He did it at work, uh, and I think the IT guys had to come down and have a word with him. Really? <laughs> yeah. yeah. Are, are, you sure that, are you sure that's not just an elaborate excuse that he gave? <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I was trying to pay my council tax. Yeah. Well, you know, this this is the story that exists. You know, uh, he still works for us. He's not been sacked. Sure. I'd like to see him fired. Well, you know. <laughs> no, for I, that kind of filth. I'll see if I can do something it's about depraved. that. Listen, if you want to check out Lesbian Bitches from Hell, uh, then uh, what was the website again? <laughs> <laughs> it's we L can't give it. We can't. There, are, oh, there, are, there are young people listening, for goodness sake. They need to be protected from that stuff. And if you want to pay off any council tax, what was he? <laughs> <laughs> it's public service, after all. Um, yes, thank you very much indeed to those two gentlemen for uh, excellent recommendations. Uh, each week, of course, I like to play a hip-hop track, because I like to keep it real, keep it urban on the show. And uh, here's an absolute dynamite tune from The Roots, featuring Erica Badu. BBC Six Mute. The Roots featuring Erica Big revs here on the Steve Show. Uh, Harry has, I think, for the first time, just complimented Dan on one of his musical choices. Yeah, I thought. I don't think anyone anyone was expecting that. No, yeah. least of all me. <laughs> I thought that would infuriate him. Yeah, especially when it gets a little bit jazzy towards the end. No, no, that was wonderful. Great. Wow, this uh, uh, hug each other. Okay. Yeah, go on. Oh. Oh, that's really sweet. That's really nice. Oh. It's good. I, I think we <laughs> should have more. Slightly unclean, that. but no, yeah. it, was, it was okay. Yeah. Human contact. Just touch him in some way. Yeah. Go on. <laughs> just stroke his leg. Just no, stroke his leg. I just did. Just stroke his leg. Uh, no. What? Come on. What is it? You made me kiss Rufus <laughs> last week. Yeah, but that, that was a very, very popular moment on the show. <laughs> <laughs> the fan pages were wild about it. <laughs> so what was the tune, Dan, and, uh, and who was it by? It was called I'm Wishing. Uh, that's an apostrophe at the end of that. Word, by Loris Alexandria. Um, who's no longer with us, sadly, but she uh, was uh, largely active in the 60s, um, doing that kind of uh, heart-wrenching, big soul sound. And uh, I love that sort of thing, as you may have gathered from some of my choices in the past. Um, I lead quite a mediocre life, yes. and that provides the much-needed melodrama. Um, sure. It means that I don't have to live through all this anguish and pain. Yeah. Um, and I feel the same about Winehouse, you know. I mean, it's a shame it's been splashed all over the tabloids, but she, in a way, is a modern-day version of that, going through all this anguish, anguish writ large. And, anguish uh, is fine. I think anguish, anguish yeah. <laughs> it almost works better, in a sense. Yeah. Yes. You know? but that, I mean, that, saying anguish is the worst thing that's happened that's, to me this yeah, week. Yeah, sure. <laughs> Whereas Winehouse has had a husband carted off to the jailhouse and all kinds of things. Hey, talking of, to the big house, talking <laughs> of, uh, talking of uh, ripped from the pages of the tabloids, I um, imagine, like, you, you've been overwhelmed this week with news of uh, Rick Waller, former <laughs> pop idol contestant. I've always been quietly fascinated by Waller, uh, a giant of a man in every sense, yeah. uh, nicknamed, I'm sure, by many Fats Waller, of course. Brilliant. Uh, big old, yeah, big old guy. And um, he had, as you may remember, a, a smash hit with a version of uh, Dolly Parton's I Will Always Love You. And um, he, there was reports in the press that he uh, was giving up music which obviously shocked many of us, because a fan uh, who he is now engaged to be married to uh, came over to him uh, at gig, and it was reported, they, they rather gleefully reported that she was the only fan that came up to him and uh, gave him a big hug. Anyway, they're getting engaged, but she apparently is a pagan, 
and she has banned him from doing any more music. Oh. Or she said that you can only marry me, you've got to give up music, right? So I was naturally, as many Waller fans were, I was shocked and stunned to find mm. out that he was turning his back on uh, on music. And um, I instantly, of course, went to the Waller website, where there is, you may wish to check this out, Harry, <laughs> a quite a heartfelt plea from Waller that not only puts the record straight and makes it clear that he's not turning his back on music because of his love, but actually because he wants to um, find other ways of supporting his uh, soon-to-be family. Right, he feels music's not the only way, Dan, and he wants to do okay. maybe a bit of light temping or some uh, administrative work <laughs> somewhere. But then, it, by the end, he makes a, uh, he makes a quite a vicious swipe at the British press for the way that they've uh, treated him, because uh, there was about uh, seven um, lines in the sun dedicated to this story. Yeah, he yeah, obviously yeah. feels that uh, you know, it's intrusion. And uh, so anyway, I'm just pleased to report that Waller is, uh, is not forced out of the music business because of his pagan wife, but because of his own choosing. And this led me on to my other thought, which was, and you remember last week I was trying to find out who was it that recorded that song. We didn't have anyone mm. who could find, we could track down uh, the artist behind. Uh, Dan, you may not have heard this, but uh, I was listening to the uh, radio in a, uh, in a late night cab, and the uh, the lyrics were uh, it was a sort of R and B tune, and it kind of had that slow R and B groove. And the lyrics were, um, uh, "What about a little slap and tickle?" <laughs> and uh, I was very charmed by this because I thought it, it sort of brought together two of my loves, because American R and B and a sort of carry on sensibility. And uh, no one could find out who that was. But uh, further to that, I want anyone if they can tell me this and whether they can confirm this is true. You remember the uh, video, I don't know if you remember the video for I Will Always Love You, the Rick Waller version, mm. which is giant Rick in a uh, in quite a sort of boutique -y, uh, sort of loft apartment, very white and sort of lots of, um, you know, kind of w lots of mirrors and so on. Now there was a, I don't know whether it's an urban myth, there was a rumour that someone, maybe the art director, maybe the director of the video, who'd obviously been assigned to it, didn't particularly want to do it, had supposedly left a kind of message on the mirror or somewhere within the set <laughs> that's visible in the video that sort of makes his feelings known about what he thinks of this video. What does um, it say? I don't know. I can't remember what the, you know, whether it's effing and blinding or whether it's just a sort of subtle message, or indeed if this is true. But again, I put it out to the uh, Six Music <laughs> listenership. Do you have any evidence? Can you remember this? Am I the only, have I imagined this? 64046, music at bbc.co.uk. Uh, it may just be one of the great rock and roll urban myths. <laughs> <laughs> but uh, was there a secret message um, in the Rick Waller video? Am I the only person who remembers Rick Waller his or entire, cares about Rick Waller? His entire career has passed me by. Has it career. really? Yeah, I recognise his... Uh, his features, but no, nothing's really hitting home. Okay, well, um, I'm sure that, I mean, again, it's a public service broadcast, I'm sure there's a couple of Rick Waller fans out there who oh, are yeah. uh, pleased to have this information. Okay, so we'll have a tune from the Duke Special and then we might be heading towards the news. Duke Special and Our Love Goes Deeper Than This, recent single from them, and they will uh, hopefully be in session for the Steve Show next week. Uh, exciting news. And uh, further news is that we also have uh, live music later from Gideon Conn, who, uh, you know, when I'm, I'm endlessly, as you know, seeking out new music. Mm. But sometimes when I've, when I've maybe had too much new music, <laughs> I like to seek out new poetry. Oh, and I went wow. to a poetry evening, and uh, Gideon was there. Now, he is a musician, but uh, he's got a sort of poetic tip. And uh, so he's down there, and I thought, this guy's good. You know, and I used my power and authority to uh, demand that he come on the show. <laughs> and, you know, a year or so later, here he comes. So um, we're all very looking forward to that, which is excellent. Um, incidentally, we were talking about Rick Waller, and uh, obviously he was a previous Pop Idol contestant. Are you watching this year's X Factor, anyone? No, I only watch the first few weeks when it's just stupid people. I think it may only be me, then, who is uh, quietly obsessed with Ridian. Oh, I, I think he's I've amazing. Heard of him. Yeah, yeah. I, I think he's heard of absolutely him. brilliant. He's the blonde haired. He's a sort of, man. Yeah, he's a kind of cross between um, uh, Billy Idol and, and Liberace. Liberace. Yeah. yeah, it's extraordinary. <laughs> and last week he came out in a uh, giant white fur coat and did uh, <laughs> Let's Get the Party Started. It was brilliant. <laughs> and he has this tr tremendous sort of operatic voice. I mean, he's in essence a sort of novelty act, yeah. but brilliant for it. And yesterday he did, um, uh, uh, what's it called? Love Will Lift Us Up? Is that what it's called? Or li Lift My Wings Up? W wings Up with Your Wings? <laughs> lift Me Up. Love, lift you up lift, your wings. You Lift Me Up? Is that what it's your called? Your Wings what, Lift me? Westlife he West have done it thing. and other people have done it. Yeah. Do you know the one? Yeah, yeah he I did that. So. And Simon Cowell said that might be I've recorded he said I've recorded that song <laughs> hundreds of times. <laughs> And that's the best version, maybe the best version I've ever heard. And it was tremendous. Because uh, I've heard some very, very bad versions, including when I, you know how rock and roll I am. Mm. And I was once on a cruise with my parents. Yeah. Because it's the sort of thing that Sid Vicious would have done. Absolutely. And uh, I heard a woman there, oh, terrible squeaky version of that. And I, it turned me off that song forever. This guy, I mean, get, get, you know, he has just brought it back, really. And he's quite phenomenal. So if you don't watch The X Factor, worth checking out, really. And he is, uh, and he may be the new meatloaf. <laughs> and the, <laughs> there's no stronger praise than that.
All right, so, so we, we go to the news. Uh, we're coming back with live music, and uh, we'll delve into the pigeon hole as well. It's a Steve show. Someone in the Wombats camp has not thought things through because that tune uh, references Christmas, and yet it is not out until January 14th. I've slammed the bats so early in the show. It's not in the Christmas spirit, but uh, never mind. I'll tell you what is the Christmas treats I've bought for everyone. A lot of people said Steve wouldn't remember. It's not the sort of thing I've done. I've known Harry since how yeah. long? Uh, well, 10. Have you ten? ever received a gift from me? Where have you found these treats? <laughs> uh, no, no, no. Them? I've actually thought them through myself. This is insane. Really? Yes, I have. I'm okay, feeling so slightly nervous. This is radio dynamite. This. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, it's not self-indulgent dr drivel. It's radio <laughs> gold. It's uh, award-winning. You have made the. Oh, no, Harry, you'll notice that every tiny That's envelope. Minuscule, isn't it? Yeah. Thank you very Don't much. lose it. Rufus, Stipe you've got one as well. Thanks, yeah, if you want big. to. Guilt edged. Nice. Guilt edged. It's, um, it's just an envelope. Has it got cash in? There's a slightly larger uh, one for uh, Jude. I should point out that's. Oh, 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 look at that! I get a box. It's uh, it's Don't tell me what it is. it's Jude. Uh, not as our um, surprise Christmas guest thought, uh, Jew. It's not a poorly <laughs> Jew in the corner. <laughs> um, I try not to identify people merely by their religion anymore. <laughs> Apparently that is frowned upon, um, <laughs> says the PC Brigade. So uh, I'm, it was Jude, of course, sickly Jude, who is uh, unwell. And uh, feel free to open those gifts should yeah. you wish to. Um, oh and I'll just, uh, you've had plenty of time to do so. I'm a little frustrated it's taken that long. Um, but they are, I would say, uh, I've. <gasps> Yes, yes, you're correct to have that reaction, um, because in what an effort, in an effort to seem more like, in an effort God, to seem what? more like Alan Sugar. <laughs> never before mental. have I, my dream as you know is to sit in a large office, um, with uh, a secretary called perhaps Paula. Zzz, Paula, get me Sydney on the phone. <laughs> That's the dream, um, I've not yet lived that dream, but this is the first opportunity I've had to give people a, a proper Christmas bonus for all the good work you've done on the show. This is like the episode of The Simpsons where Mr Burns is on smack and he's just really <laughs> nice to everyone. <laughs> yeah. oh, lovely. Now I should point out, for those, uh, I mean, let's not, let's not name the figure. It would be, <laughs> it would be crass, okay? But it's a generous Christmas bonus Don't in the shit. form of a cheque. Now what I will point out is this, um, uh, Rod Stewart, okay, famously always pays by cheque yeah. because he discovers generally that people do not cash that cheque. <laughs> <laughs> they merely frame it and put it perhaps above the bar wall or whatever it is. So in case you wish to do the same, you may think about not cashing that cheque but merely framing it. I'm concerned that there's going to be strings attached, that we're going to be forced to go out and buy something which we're going to have to fight each other with. <laughs> no, <laughs> you can spend that entirely on really? whatever you want. That's However, uh, th and this is the gutting thing, um, it's a crime that I cannot apparently deduct it for tax purposes. No, oh. I, no the first thing I thought was check with my accountant, but uh, he said no, <laughs> it's not uh, a, 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 um, appropriate apparently, which is a great shame. But anyway, um, I think that's uh, got you all in the Christmas spirit. Yeah, and frankly, you back. better pull your finger out on today's show <laughs> and show your worth. Jude, I hope you're uh, happy. You can. Um, Camper. Perfect. That is exactly what it is. Yeah. Fair trade, nice and oak things in and things. Jolly good. Thank you. Um, Thank you very much. Not at all, uh, Your Highness. Let's um, <laughs> play some Street pictures, and then we will introduce our uh, massive celebrity guest. And uh, talking of facts, I was having lunch earlier with a friend of mine, and it was very pleasant in Hampstead, and uh, but it was ruined. Um, by a little old lady, an 89-year-old lady, who came in, she sat next to us, and I knew as soon as she sat down she was going to be trouble, and, uh, very, very sweet and charming, but just kept chipping in the whole time I'm trying to have a conversation, and I was chatting at one point about films, in a very in-depth way, I have to say, with my friend, very profound, and she pipes up, she just suddenly, just leans across, she just says, uh, yes, my ears are very good, from my age. We went, oh yeah. She went, I was just hearing hear you talking about, um, films there. Chaplin. She just put Chaplin, and we went, right, yes. She went, have you heard of him? We went, yeah. She went, Charlie Chaplin. We went, yeah, yeah, yeah. She said a documentary about him last night, brilliant. And off she went about Charlie Chaplin. We just politely nodded, tried to get back to our conversation. She then piped up, what do you make about, um, Ken Livingston going to India? What's that? What do you think of that? The mayor going to India. And we said, well, what? Is he gone to India? Yeah, he went to India today. What do you think of that? Shouldn't he be in London? What's he doing? What are we doing? Paying for him to go over there. And we said, well, we don't know. And then she went, Mahatma Gandhi, he was a terrorist. <laughs> <laughs> he, he was a terrorist? She was going, yeah. And she started getting into this. She was going, they were happy before Mahatma Gandhi got involved. But not in this, I mean, I'm making her sound more vicious than she was. She said it in a more gentle and pleasant way. <laughs> um, but the weirdest was then she said, well, that thing about Ken Livingston is he's gay. And we said, oh, I'm not sure I've ever heard that. He went, yes. I remember in 1960, I was in Hampstead, and it was all around in the local community, because he was running down a hill, he'd been found in a gay pub. 
And we went, well, why would you have been aware of Ken Livingstone in 1960? She went, yeah, well, he was in the council, wasn't he? We went, no, surely, I mean, I don't know how old he is, but that would have made him about 13 or 14. <laughs> he wouldn't have been in the council. And she went, well, in the 60s or 70s. And then she said, you just don't know. You don't know anything, you young people. And so uh, we instantly Googled, naturally, when I got home, instantly Googled Ken and uh, Gaynis. I've not found any suggestion that that is true. So, you know, if you are going to use that as a factoid, then um, be careful because there's no evidence of it. But uh, I just thought it was interesting how, you know, they talk about politeness nowadays. Older people can just be just as rude, just as impolite. And what do you do in that situation? Rufus, you're an absolute gentleman. Mm. If an elderly person, very lonely, clearly. Mm -hmm. She's 89 years old, keeps talking about the war, keeps talking about her time working at Fortnum and Mason, and then starts telling you that uh, Ken Livingston's gay and that, um, you know, Mahatma Gandhi's a bloody terrorist. I don't know what, what do you do? How do you politely move the conversation on? Because it's a baffling thing for her to say, Carl, young people don't know anything, when clearly she doesn't know anything no, at all. No idea. She knows the opposite of what's true. That's yeah. what she knows. Yeah. yeah. So, I don't know. I just, um... You just have to talk back to them really, really loudly and just <laughs> make your point very, very... I don't know. I don't know what you Because I didn't even want to argue with it. That was the problem. Then we got to start arguing, which, of course, just prolonged the conversation. Mm. I, what I want to know is how do you confidently and discreetly just say, thank you very much for your contribution, mm -hmm. but you are poking your nose in. We are yeah. trying to have a conversation. How do you do that? You d I think I do the... I'm so, look, I haven't seen my friend here for a long time. We're just saying a bit... I'm sorry. He's just had some bad news. Do you mind if... You know, a bit of that. A bit of lying. You lie. That's what <laughs> yeah. you do. But he's had a bit of bad news. Yeah, something like that. That's nice. Yeah. Back to, anyway, back to your mother, Steve. Or, yeah. You know, so, so as it, how far has it spread, Steve? Or some, a leading right. question <laughs> that sure. hints, and then that someone will get the message and go, I'm sorry, I'll leave you to it. Well, if you could, because we haven't, and we're just a bit. Sammy, how would you deal with it? Move table. Move table? Yeah. Pretend you're leaving and go out of view. Right. Or we just ordered the food, you see. That was the problem. If I'm on my own, I just agree with everything they say, because I hate getting into arguments with strangers, because yeah. I inevitably get quite excited or annoyed. Um, I do end up talking to some quite interesting people. Yesterday, for example, a Welshman that for a great deal of the conversation sounded maybe Austrian, um, incredibly drunk, talking about a gorgeous young man with a little bit of a lisp who could be anywhere between five foot eight and six foot. That is literally all I glean from about a ten minute conversation. <laughs> right, right. <laughs> You're a six foot beautiful man. Beautiful man. <laughs> that's literally all we heard. It was, it was unreal because it did take me about three minutes to go, oh, he's speaking English. Oh, right. And then my brain got tuned in and I started picking up on words and going, yeah, pubs. <laughs> and minds and just agreeing with words. No. Just laughing and agreeing and being friendly. I've got to go now. Nice to meet you. Bye. And, uh, Tony Dan, you've obviously no doubt been hassled by old ladies many, many times. Often, yes. Uh, they tower above you, obviously. What, uh, <laughs> what would you say sweet. to get rid of them? I'm quite intimidated. Um, there's nothing you can do, because once they're over 85, the mental, so yes. Rick's <laughs> suggestion won't work. Yeah. It's, it's reasonable. No, exactly, they won't listen to reason. You're reasoning with someone of our age, you know. If, uh, if we were asking you, Steve, how far it'd spread, yeah. uh, we'd leave you alone. 89-year-old, list of ailments would come out, so that <laughs> exactly. wouldn't work. Yeah. Um, so, a, a bigger man than me might resort to violence. Do you know what I did? Go on. I'd have thrown out. <laughs> yeah. I just said, I'm Steve Merchant. Who the hell do you think you are? I don't care if you've lived through a war. Get the hell out. Where's your Emmy? And she was soon off. Live music. Live music. Six music. <laughs> Um, yes, I need to make issue an apology to a person who may or may not be a listener. Um, I, you know, I'm a generous man, as you know, and uh, I give, I'm, I'm a giver, not a taker. <laughs> and I, um, was hurrying along, uh, on the tube the other day, down one of the corridors. I was rushing to a meeting or something. Probably very high powered. I can't remember what it was. Not a meeting in the tube station. No, 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 no. It was, uh, it was, I can't remember, the top shop or something. And, um, I, uh, yes, and there was a guy busking. And he was busking, and he was singing a Johnny Cash's "Ring of Fire," a burning ring of fire. And uh, there was, you know, sometimes on the tube you can get very uh, busy. Yeah, everyone was kind of basically driving forward; they're rushing to work, or whatever. And so, no time to stop. So I saw the guy busking. And I thought, you know, I, yes, I could give him a quid. It seemed nice. It was a nice tune. He was doing it well. But I just, did, I was in the throng of people. It was, I didn't have time. And so, as I passed him, he just started going. Steve Merchant fell down to a burning ring of fire. <laughs> and I thought, oh no, this, now I'm in trouble because what do I do? You know, I'm being moved forward. I'm rushed forward. I can't really go. I have to fight the kind of crowd and go back to give him money and so I actually just had to keep going forward but that didn't stop him so he kept on going and he was um so he, he started with Steve Merchant filled into a burning ring of fire and then he and I, I need to cleaning this I'm cleaning this up for you <laughs> but he said uh, he didn't give me any cash the lan lanky stingy and I can't say the word because yeah. it was unclean Good but this is of course magnified by the echo of the tube <laughs> of the kind of tunnel so it's echoing down there sort of haunting me as I go on and I can hear him still singing 
week. <laughs> and they're down there still singing insulting lyrics about me um, for not giving him any money. So, um, and I don't know, I mean, again, you know, we've talked last week about advice, what do you do in that situation? As I say, it would have been pretty much impossible for me to fight my way back, give him cash. Um, so uh, I apologise to him, you know, I would have given you, I mean, I don't, I don't generally give money to bus because I don't like to support them, you know, um, but, um, but, uh, I don't know, what do you do in that situation? Should I fought my way back? I mean, um, Rufus, we were talking last week about your gentlemanly advice. We were, Stephen, and my instinct is to say you'd be far better to set up a direct debit, uh, right. upon reaching your place of business. <laughs> to some kind just of charity that helps? Homeless people or, and or buskers, just sit right. down and go, oh, I feel awful about not chucking a quid in that guy's guitar case. Yeah. I tell you what, www shelter or justgiving.com sure. there you go three pounds a month the rest of your life that, okay. that'll atone for your you know your sin presuming i don't want to do that <laughs> um, <laughs> harry what would your advice be well it, it's funny because yesterday i was out shopping in a well-known south london shopping center and there was a busker but he wasn't very good and he wasn't really singing a song he had a guitar which he was kind of just hitting and he was going da 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 da, da, da <laughs> just making songs up but he would engage with people as they walked past so he'd be da 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 lady's got a purple coat have a nice weekend and once he'd engaged someone in that you can't help but turn and look at him and then how can you walk away without giving money it's sure. a very difficult yeah, situation very canny. i think you have to give money but how would i have done it i had to fight back fight my way back down the tunnel yeah do it you, <laughs> you just, like just do it. You say you, you just do something like that. You look like Mr. Big Shot. It'd be great. <laughs> oh. It'd be good for your rep. Um, but then I surely if I've gone, if I've made such an effort to go all the way back, I'm going to need to give quite a generous sum. No, not really. Just because uh, you, you just look like a nice guy instantly. Then you can sort of you know toss a couple of quid in his uh, little bag, uh, hang five for a while. Uh, you know, shoot the breeze. See, I actually think the opposite. I think it makes you look like a bad guy to go back. You don't look like a good guy to go back. The good guy would have given money in the first instance. You feel that you I'm look like you've been pressured into it, and that's into worse. It. No. I think you'd have just looked back and shot him a look, oh, you guys, and then just walked off. So you you quite pro the idea of just walking past, walking on by? I do give money to buskers if they're good. That seems a decent rule to me. Yeah. If he wasn't good in the first instance, you were right not to give him money. It's your personal opinion. You don't have to give everyone money just because you've got money. No, but the irony was I did think he was quite good. Oh, then you I was have. just being stingy. My my opinion's changed if you, Stephen. <laughs> okay. Well, the theory of really, really tiny atoms contradicts the theory of the universe, sure. as propagated by Einstein. It, it doesn't quite match up, and physicists and scientists have always been trying to work out why that is, and they've yeah. never quite solved it. The great minds, Hawking, Vorderman, <laughs> sure. Goody, <laughs> yeah. you know, none of them have cracked it. <laughs> yeah. um, so at the, right now, as we're speaking, right now in Switzerland, <laughs> there's a, a tunnel which links Switzerland to France. Right. Uh, but scientists have colonised it and they've, uh, they've built what can only be described as a large hadron collider. Um, oh my God! Yes, that's the only way I can describe it, Steve. Are they uh, going to be bashing um, Goody against Vorderman <laughs> in effort to see if they can kind of meld together in one giant brain? Kind of, kind of. Uh, what they're going to do, and again, the, the science comes in here, but they're going to take small particles in this space. They're going to accelerate them. It gives them information that they can use, and they're hoping to find out about this mysterious component called the Higgs boson. Okay. Uh, which apparently, if discovered, might help us understand the entire universe. That's useful. That's um, handy. Now, they're going to try this later on this year. Uh, there is one side effect. Right. One downside. Um, it's possible that when they turn it on, uh, it may cause the destruction of the entire universe. <laughs> right. Okay. Um, so, that's a downside. Sounds like a time for some new, some new music. <laughs> um, no, sorry. Hang on. It might cause the end of the world, right? That's a little bit of a worry. Yeah, not just it? the world. The universe. Oh, the entire yeah. universe? Yeah, yeah, yeah. Okay, yeah. now, I'm pretty certain that BG is interested at this point. Yeah. He was dozing off earlier. He didn't get the Vorderman uh, <laughs> reference, but Brian's ears have, have perked up. He's buzzing now. He's, buzzing. <laughs> yeah, he's absolutely. He's thinking. Is there a movie in it? Is what he's thinking. Yeah. yeah. But um, so uh, so the world could end. I mean, I'm as far as I'm aware with this story, we could generate a black hole. Probably uh, when we switch I on the machine. I believe so, and yeah. The which world gets sucked, sucked into it. The entire it. world it becomes sort of antimatter and everything will be destroyed and possibly take the whole universe with it. Yeah. Um, and when are they going to switch that on? Uh, well, it's sometime this year. I'm not sure exactly when. It might be in the summer. Well, it be was planned for November 26 last year. Oh, was it? Because I heard about it and got really upset because that was the day before my 21st birthday. Oh. I wasn't upset that the whole universe might be destroyed. I might miss my own party. Yeah. That's what I was good about. Couldn't they at least wait, you know, another exactly. week? Exactly. Sure. So they've, mm. uh, they have put it off. So I'm hoping they are eventually just going to not do it. There's no need to reenact the big bang we're here let's accept it let's move on well it, does does bono know about this bob geldof does, uh, does he? Uh, he, apparently, <laughs> he apparently said uh, that the meaning of life is life itself right so that's bob geldof's take on it and Great. you know he was in live aid and, and the boomtown rats <laughs> So, um, so it's come May time. Um, we should yeah, seriously I'm not sure think if it's about May, but it's certainly the summer. And um, yeah, it's I, they say it's unlikely, but who knows? 
Um, I think we've got some... Because I'm instantly thinking is we should have some giant sort of Steve Show um, anticipatory, um, you know, countdown. photon <laughs> processing button thing <laughs> pressing. Yeah. yeah, a countdown. But also, uh, I'd, I'd got you to know what you would do the day before it gets switched on. I'm mm. thinking we should go probably go berserk. Yeah. A couple of ideas. <laughs> have a think about that. We'll uh, talk about it in a sec. <laughs> got to on some more music before the, uh, the news. <laughs> um, it's good that even the most lofty of intellectual ideas we can reduce to an amusing, fo- <laughs> amusing radio chat. Nice. Um, anyway, here's a, a new tune from Son of Dave. Old times were good times. <laughs> Six Music on digital, online, BBC Six Music.